bless you, bless you for being here. How are you feeling, Calms? You good? Feeling great. Feeling great? Yeah, feeling strong. Yeah, you look strong. I did 200 push-ups right before the show. Yeah, no, you, you always do. Yeah. You always do. You actually do it as part of the warm-up for the, for the crowd, for right? For the crowd. I yeah. come out here, I do 200 push-ups. People just sit in sort of a quiet, respectful awe of how strong I am. Yeah. Yeah. And that gets them pumped up to, you know, see some light comedy. Gets them pumped up. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Hey, Sarah Highlands here. It's a new, her new show, Bumper, Bumper in Berlin, is a, it's a, it's a spin-off. It's a spin-off series from Pitch Perfect. But you were in Pitch... Which Pitch Perfect were you in, Reg? Uh, two. Pitch Perfect 2. I was supposed to be in this show, but uh, I had this show. Did you ever do a cappella in real life? How would you get on in a cappella? I never did. I mean, I, you know, fake versions of it, but I would probably be just like the bass guy or the drum guy. No, but you've got a big range. Yeah, I guess so, but I, don't, I can't remember lyrics. What's the lowest... <laughs> what's the lowest you can sing and the highest you can sing? Can you give it to me? Let's give me the low. Let's, uh, let's see. Give me the low. La, 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 la. Nice. <laughs> and then, uh, no, I can't even get it. Uh, and then, uh, la, 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 la. Let's see. Ha, ha, ee, ha, ee. That's about it. That's it. All I got. Nothing in the middle, though. Nothing in the middle. Nothing in the middle. Absolutely nothing in the middle. I had to be in a show once that started when I was like, when I was sort of like 16, I was in this show. And the first, the first line that my character had to say was this like, I think, I can't remember even what the line it was like, like old man sing, something like that. And it started that low. It was like, oh, oh. And the only, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So this, the, and it was the first line of the show. The first line of the show. <laughs> So I just, and this show started like this, with me going, oh. <laughs> I think we could get an a cappella group started right here in this, in this studio. You think so? Right. People on the show? This gang here, okay, you're gonna, you're gonna go, ah, uh, okay, that's your note, try it. Uh, nice, hold that note. Ever in the middle, ah, uh, ready, go. Uh, okay, nice. This whole gang and the bar, and Louis, Rob, and Nick Bernstein, you're in this gang. So it's ah, ah, ah. Okay, ready, go. Ah. No. <laughs> listen! <laughs> you have got to listen! <laughs> this is fun! <laughs> ah, ah. No, wait! <laughs> We've got to start auditioning people and they wait in the line. Ah, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. So ready, listen. And at the bar, I can see you. Go. Uh, uh, okay, wait, so hold that. Ready, here we go, here we go. <laughs> Some people will be called back. Some of you won't. <laughs> It's time for the news. And this evening, President Biden hosted French President Emmanuel Macron at the White House for the first state dinner since 2019. You just know at some point during that dinner with Emmanuel Macron, Biden leaned in and was like, what should I, what should I call you? Should I call you Manny? <laughs> Manny, what about Macron and cheese? <laughs> A state dinner at the White House. I wonder if they serve French food. Or as Macron calls it, food. <laughs> this is a landmark event between the United States and France. They finally started negotiations to get Emily out of Paris. <laughs> Here's a story that we saw. A Bulgarian company has introduced a human-sized emotional support teddy bear that's perfect for snuggling. This is real. The five-foot, seven-inch... Plush bear is the shape and size of a male human body, but has the head of a teddy bear, right? Look at this here. There it is. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, usually a grown adult sleeping with a teddy bear is a red flag, but this... No, this is the same. It's a bigger red flag. <laughs> That's what it is. Here's another photo. Look at this here. Look at that. <laughs> Can I tell you the truth? This is not great for my self-esteem to see a stuffed bear that is in better shape than me. 
Look at his face. Why does he have that sort of cocky expression? <laughs> like, he's making it seem like he knows how to satisfy her in a way that I could only dream of. <laughs> Here's another promotional photo. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Six foot seven, and he costs $160. But you know what? He listens. <laughs> And a woman in Argentina was shocked to learn that Tito, the abandoned kitten that she had rescued from the streets, was not actually a cat, but a wild puma. Yeah, the news was broken to her after she took Tito to the vet. Early on, she knew something was amiss, specifically her two other cats and her pet chihuahua. <laughs> I'm not sure this is a bad thing. I think my neighbours would respect me more if I had a full-size puma just roaming around my yard. <laughs> Now, this freaks me out, because when, where I'm from, you say puma. But you say puma. Yeah. Correct. Puma. 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 Yeah. We say puma. We, when puma. you say puma, it sounds like you're going to use it to kill James Bond. <laughs> no, but we say puma in the same way that we say, like, pubic hair. Yeah. You don't say pubic hair, do you? <laughs> do you? Do you just go look at my poops? <laughs> do you? I've got to shave my poops. <laughs> yes. Do you? No, you don't. You say, call them our poops. You no, you don't call them poops. All Americans call no, them their poops. Don't. We do. We call Stop. them poops. Yeah. No, hang on. Yeah. I need an American I don't know. Are you American? Do you call them poops? No, I don't ask a man. <laughs> Matt, do you call them poops? No. No! <laughs> That's because he doesn't, have, That's no, he doesn't no. have any. He's yeah. clean shaven. <laughs> No, I am sorry. I am sorry. You have picked the wrong man. If that man, that man I know for a fact is Hassute. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> he is Hassute from nipple to ankle. <laughs> like, 100%. Yeah, so you don't say... Where do you on. go for a drink? The pub. Ah, that's why not the pube. <laughs> because it hasn't got an E on the end. It well, hasn't got an E on the end. Neither does Puma. No, it hasn't got an E on the end. No, it hasn't... I think it's a Spanish pronunciation. Is, That's probably where you're running into yeah. an issue. It's Puma. Puma. Si. Puma. But is it pubic hair? Si. <laughs> it's also a Spanish word, yeah. <laughs> All right. Ars publica. All right. <laughs> Fine. I'll give it to you. Sure. Really? I'll keep saying Puma. That's the first time. For this next joke, I'll keep saying Puma, but I can't imagine it's going to work or be in the show. <laughs> She only found out it was a wild puma from the vet. Well, more so from all of the claw marks on the vet's face. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> well, now, now... I mean, look, I call it, didn't I? I mean, like... <laughs> try it again. Try it again with puma. Try okay. it your way. <laughs> OK. She only found out it was a wild puma from the vet. <laughs> well, more so from all of the claw marks all over the vet's face. <laughs> And we wanted to show you this. A Texas non-profit and a museum have teamed up to break the Guinness World Record for the largest published book. It's a collection of writing and artwork from students, and it measures seven feet tall and 11 feet wide. Here it is here. Look at that. The world's largest printed book. And since it's in Texas, it's only a matter of days before someone at a school board meeting tries to have that book banned from the library. <laughs> The book contains writing and artwork from 1,000 Texas students between third grade and 12th grade, so you don't need me to tell you this. The story is absolute dog <laughs> <laughs> That's the issue here. If you're gonna do it, do it. <laughs> like, when have you ever been, like, by a pool? And you see someone, you go, whoa, what are you reading? And they go, oh, it's this book. It's a, it's a, it's a collection of stories written by third graders <laughs> to 12th graders. And you're like, oh, amazing. Let me get it on my Kindle right now. <laughs> imagine, imagine, imagine being with someone, they go, oh, I heard you published a book. What's it about? Uh, about it's about 11 feet wide. <laughs> And finally, if you're thinking about visiting Miami next Monday or Tuesday, and I know that you are, here's an interesting place you can stay. DJ Khaled has listed his shoe closet for two one-night stays on Airbnb. Here it is here. Look at that. The closet is pretty spacious, although it is hard to sleep when DJ Khaled just comes in and screams all night, another one. <laughs>
Now, I should say, it's not DJ Khaled's actual closet. It's a replica for two people, and it's $11 a night. Yeah. I like that it says, we the best. <laughs> like, who's we? Because when it comes to the best, I'm not sure you can include the two people who are splitting an $11 bill to sleep <laughs> in a closet. <laughs> but DJ Khaled's idea, it really does seem to be catching on. One famous hotel chain has actually already rebranded itself as We the Best Western. <laughs> and that's the news. We'll be right back, everybody.